So I'm going to do that again. Welcome everybody to the Zigan webinar series. This is Connectivity HDMI and AV over IP. This is session three, one gig versus 10 gig AV over IP solutions. Um, again, I'm Vanessa, I uh, work with Zigan and with me is Ed Delali and he is the president and lead engineer of Zigan. Uh, and is extremely well qualified to actually speak about these topics that we're going to discuss. Hey, Ed, how you doing? Doing great. Thanks for the intro. Appreciate you guys joining us this morning. So we're trying to we're going to try to make this uh, interesting and give you some pointers as to when to choose the right solution when it comes okay. to one gig versus ten gig. Awesome. So we're, what we want to start with first is why we're looking at AV over IP versus the traditional analog installation. There's several different reasons why we are obviously moving to AV over IP. We have the advantage of using the existing IT network infrastructure. Uh, it offers more feature sets. We utilize less devices. Um, and most of the AV over IP products are multi-purpose and offer some scalability. So your traditional analog installations require dedicated equipment. They're bulkier, they're less, less, uh, less, less flexible because I can speak this morning. And uh, they don't have as much of uh, a, a way to expand uh, for growth. Right. So what we have here is a side-by-side -side comparison of a standard uh, cross point switch application and then an AV over IP installation. So we've got two different ways to look at this installation and then some diagrams that Ed did. Ed, can you uh, speak to this a little bit, please? Absolutely. Again, as you mentioned, these are just some a side by side comparison, uh, traditional cross point switch versus an AV over IP switch or uh, AV over IP system. Obviously, when it comes to traditional cross-point switches, you're limited to the number of IOs, the inputs and outputs. In this case, uh, we have uh, 16 by 16 or an 8 by 8. Obviously, we're limited to the 8 input and 8 output. When we want to expand, unfortunately, we have to uh, rip out this chassis and go to a bigger unit. If customer even wants to upgrade or just add one source, one additional source or one additional display. However, when it comes to AV over IP, it's, uh, you know, um, there are no limitations. It's infinite number of inputs and outputs. In this reference diagram, I'm utilizing three 48 port switches. I mean, obviously I don't have to start with that. I could just start with an eight by eight and expand to it. As long as they're cascadable switches, I could just um, go ahead and add infinite number of switches. So for this application, again, we're using um, three 48 port switches all we have to do is just cascade and add more encoders and decoders and now that we understand this there are a lot of solutions not a lot of solutions i would say there's a couple of good solutions out there when it comes to av over ip we have one gig solution and we also have 10 gig solution so again we've got the one gig versus the 10 gig av over ip solutions these are obviously the two that are the most familiar so how do you know which solution is right for you because there's a time and place for the one gig and a time and place for the 10 gig av over ip solutions so yes. we're going to look at some of the pros and cons of each one of these solutions so right. we're going to start off with the one gig av over ip solution um, you've got some pros. Again, there's a place for the one gig solution. We definitely want to emphasize that. This is a less expensive solution. It works off of readily available one gig switches. You can find them every, anywhere. Everybody has a good one gig switch. It's something that you guys are already familiar with. You've been working with for years. It supports video walls. It has some support on the AES uh, 67, um, but we do have some cons. So Ed, you wanna tell us some of the things that we're gonna lose by utilizing the uh, one gig solution? Obviously we're limited to the bandwidth, right? One gig. And when it comes to one gig, I've prepared a chart that we're gonna dive into and understand uh, the limitations of one gig. So obviously compression, no room for growth, extreme compression because sometimes it compresses up to 64 to one. Uh, it's not flexible. Um, it adds latency, a lot of latency, because if you're trying to send full bandwidth uh, with 4 gig, say you're trying to send uh, 4K content, you're going to add a lot of latency. Uh, there is also video degradation. You're limited to HTCP 2.2 at best. 
uh, and will need to be replaced in the near future because we know everything is moving towards 8K and 16K. So you're already limited in bandwidth and just doesn't have the, the uh, it, it's, it, it doesn't have the expandability exactly. to, to hit those, um, those higher bandwidths. Correct. All right. It already has a bottleneck, so. Okay. Well, let's look at the um, let's look at the 10 gig solution. Yeah, and I also want to point out that uh, the oh, ABS sorry. support is is going to require an additional port. So we have to keep in mind because you're burning up a port on your switch to be able to inject any sort of AES. And when we talk about AES, most one gig solutions, 99% of them will limit you to a Dante, the most common one in the industry. It's one flavor. So we also want to look at uh, the 10 gig AV over IP solutions. So the pros are infinite amount of pros. Um, you know, expandability, room for growth, virtually zero latency, high quality in audio and video. And that means uncompressed audio and uncompressed video in most cases. Um, um, so it's um, customizable. You could do whatever you want. It supports dynamic and static HDR. It supports Dolby Vision. It supports uncompressed audio, I just mentioned that, supports uh, USB 2.0, supports AES 67, ST2110, um, and all the, the other players, whether it's Dante, Ravina, Livewire, and we'll dive into that a little bit uh, further down the road. It also has AES 128 video encryption, so no one could tap into your switch and try to see what you what kind of content you got playing so case in point if you're doing any sort of uh, um, high priority or uh, government, like government work. applications uh, you're trying to block that content from being encrypted so uh, supports video walls tiling multi-view picture and picture picture by picture and it, that's a standard feature you don't need to buy additional equipment to do all that Whereas one gig requires you to uh, to buy the the quads the quad splitters, I believe they are. Um, also, with one gig, you get audio matrix built into it, and it does not utilize any additional ports. It's backwards compatible to HTCP 1.4, 2.2, 2.3, which is for 8K um, and beyond, and designed with future in mind. The only con that we have when it comes to 10 gig is your switch, the upfront cost. Really, that's it. Because when your you... infrastructure, your wiring, your cabling is already done in 10 gig because you're gonna be utilizing CAT6 cable. So if everything is equal, the only thing you're really adding is the cost of the switch. Right, and so again, we said the upfront cost and we have somebody asking what's the relative cost difference between these two options. Um, the one gig switch, it, it depends on which manufacturer you're going to go for. Ed, you could you, I mean, I couldn't even throw a number out there. I just know that it can be significant, not significantly, but it is more expensive. Well, just to give you an idea, one gig versus 10 gig, um, in 10 gig is coming down in price right. uh, as the demand increases. Uh, just to give you an idea, a couple of years ago, retail price of a 10 gig switch 16 port 10 gig switch would be roughly about two thousand dollars um and that was a little bit over a hundred dollars per port now they've come down in price and it's uh under about eighty dollars per port right um the other thing that you want to consider when you're looking at these upfront expenses is that a lot of times that sticker shock is not comparing apples to apples so if somebody is doing a one gig solution versus a 10 gig solution and they're just comparing the encoders and the decoders they're making it very simple what they're not looking at is what has actually been added into the encoders and decoders on the 10 gig side so there's you're getting a lot more for the money than you would after you have to add all the bells and whistles on that one gig solution. Correct. So By the time you add the, the multi-view and the picture and picture and the audio matrix and the USB matrix and everything else, you're actually gonna be tripling the, the cost on a one gig solution. And right. it's not gonna be seamless integration because it's gonna require you to buy multiple switches in order for you to accomplish that. Whereas with one gig, at least with one R design, what it, everything just sits on a single switch and you have multiple matrices built into one. 
And now that we covered that uh, briefly, because we're going to go in depth as to the, the feature sets in 10 gig versus one gig. But um, obviously there is a place in point for one gig and 10 gig. So the next slide we're looking at is when to invest in the one gig and when to invest in your 10 gig solution. So which, which solution works for, for what? So when you're looking at your one gig AV over IP solutions, you're, you are looking at more budget conscious um, situations or you're looking at situations where the 4K solution isn't as important as it is in other solutions and other, other situations. So when you're looking at bars, when you're looking at restaurants, gyms, a smaller home, uh, just, uh, just a smaller solution or a smaller need in general, the one gig AV over IP solution is fine. Correct. Now, but when you're looking at your 10 gig AV over IP solutions, the one thing you wanna remember is the 10 gig A has that bandwidth, but two, it also has that room for growth. It has that expandability, which is really important when it comes to enterprise and commercial clients because they're gonna have this specific installation put in now, they are going to wanna grow it makes more sense for them to go ahead and utilize that 10 gig solution because now they're investing in their infrastructure, they're investing in the longevity of this system and that the growth that's gonna come is going to be a lot less expensive in the long run. Right, with one gig in my, again, this is my personal take on it, one gig is already outdated because you're cramming everything into one gig pipeline. And I, I think, uh, you know, we're above and beyond that one gig so right um when it comes to government and military again that bandwidth is vital and the network isolation is also vital for those types of installations um also the 4k content is extremely important for them it's important in your hospital settings it's important in your security settings especially when it comes to your gaming which gaming is a huge it's becoming a huge um, factor in our industry right now. It's its whole own industry. They need the bandwidth because let me tell you something, when you have latency happening in a gaming event, they're coming for you people. They're coming for you. They don't want that latency. Yeah, um, you, the same thing you with your live events. Latency. Yeah, you, you can't afford latency. latency. That's yeah. when you die. That's when you die. <laughs> exactly. um, when it comes to your marine and aviation, uh, again, we've got security, hospitality, broadcast, has to have that pure, true 4K 444 content because obviously it's broadcast. They can't have any degradation and artifact in their, um, their videos. And then with higher education, and again, I go back to commercial and businesses, that pure uncompressed signal is important to them because they're doing a lot of very detailed work on charts and presentations and all those things are extremely important. Plus Especially there's in just operating rooms. If you're going to yes. utilize any sort of video distribution in operating rooms, you want to make sure it's over 10 gig because you're able to do gen lock and gen lock means you're locking the frames from the source to display. So that means whatever you're sending, you're receiving at the same exact time. You're not missing any frames. And it's real quick general. before before we move, um, Greg has a question. He says most HDMI cables are 18 gig. So is 10 gig enough? So obviously when it comes to 10 gig, you're gonna be doing some sort of compression, just like when, when it comes to um, HD base T extenders, you're gonna be doing some sort of compression. And we're gonna get into compression because not all compression are the same. Um, 10 gig is enough. When I show you the chart, you'll understand when we start compressing things because we actually don't compress anything up to 4K30, 444 chroma. And anything that's the above, Zigin product that does not compress anything up to 4K. Correct. And we utilize display stream conversion. So display stream conversion is broadcast standard. Um, if you've looked at our other courses, we did talk about the display stream conversion uh, or compression and moving forward in the HDMI 2.1 specification, they require everything to be compressed in um, display stream. So 32 gig is the max and anything above and beyond will get compressed moving forward in the 2.1 spec. And so. the uh, display stream compression is the broadcast standard. 
that's the only standard that anybody recognizes. It, uh, other than that, it's not recognized. A lot of people will use lossless compression, invisible compression technology, or color space conversion. Right. So it's really not a standard. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but we have started on talking about compression, Ed. So you wanna, we can go to the next slide and yeah. look at that. So this is compression in AV over IP. So this is a question that, that we get asked a lot. Why do we need to be concerned with 10 gig and uncompressed signal if the traditional one gig AV over IP can supposedly deliver 4K 60 Hertz and HDR? But well, yeah. go ahead, Ed. I, I can tell you're chomping at the bit. You're ready. Go for it. Can it? You know, it's advertised as, you know, 4K60 and HDR, but can it deliver 4K60 and HDR? With one gig, you're only limited at best about 8-bit color depth. Uh, you're not going to have uh, HDR10, you're not going to get Dolby Vision, and you're going to get 61 to uh, 64 to 1 compression. When people talk about HDR over one gig, you're getting 8-bit HDR, not 10-bit HDR. And this is really important to understand, and I, I have a chart showing you exactly that, why it's, why it's important to go to 10-bit or 12-bit. And uh, what are the caveats of compression? So the caveats would be reduced picture quality, artifacts, granularity, limited feature sets. And let me so, tell you guys something, Ed loves his charts. So we're going to show you again some of the charts that we've looked at several times over in our last couple sessions. But again, it's really important that we see these charts because again, it all builds up to this end result. Exactly, but here we have this original content you could see coming in and the compressed version going out to your displays. So that's the compression that we're adding, right? What, when it comes to one gig. So definitely you could see the artifacts, the granularity, um, degradation. And with that in mind, we want to dive in to our next chart. So we're going to talk about video requirements when we're designing our infrastructure. So what are some of the things that we should not forget when we're designing a video distribution infrastructure? So one thing we always talk about is our color gamut. Our color, color gamut, basically here, it shows the what's available to the human eye. This is what the human eye can see, all the colors that we could see. And these triangles represent the different flavors. Uh, one, um, 709, Rec 709, which is gonna be our 1080p, our DCI, which is the digital cinema, which is gonna be the second triangle in red. And then this black triangle represents the BT2020 color gamut, which is the information that's available to us through HDMI 2.0. Obviously more bandwidth, more, color, uh, more colors we could choose from. So it's very important for us to understand the color requirements and what humans can see. So because a lot of companies talk about, you know, when it comes to color, color is not that important because we can only see the, uh, the whites and the blacks. But that is not true because here's this chart is, going, is representing the color gamut of human eye, essentially. And then the next thing that's really important is the HDR, right? We have to understand what is HDR. HDR is going to help us understand or see the details in the shadows and the details in the highlights. Obviously, we can see the difference. It's much better. Uh, we get a sharper image. We see the details. So it's really important when it comes to HDR. And HDR8 is not going to give you the, these details. This, is, um, this, this here is going to be your HDR10. And this is the way HDR is captured. Basically, filmmakers capture that content, and then when it goes through mastering and distribution, they have to dumb it down because they didn't have the bandwidth. Initially, they didn't have the bandwidth, so they had to dumb it down. This was in a 1080p space, but when we moved to the 4K space, now we were able to figure out how to send that HDR content to the display. And one of the most important things, uh, was introduced was the candle brightness, which is uh, measured in nits. Um, so we could actually deliver uh, the, the whiteness, uh, the white levels above 1,000 nits. So it could go down from 0 0.05 nits, which are your blacks, 
up to 10,000 nits, which are your highs. So with that in mind, knowing that that's important, here's our resolution chart. Basically, this chart represents your SD, which was uh, 480p, and then HD, 720, 1080p, now in Ultra HD, and or DCI. So resolution equals to more pixel, and that equals to sharper image. But that's not all when it comes to sharper image, because our bit depth dictates how smooth that image is going to be. Here is a represent, uh, representation of our RGB triplets. This is the 8-bit. Obviously, you could see the granularity. It's not as smooth. You could see the banding. When you go into 10-bit, now that image becomes very smooth. And obviously, with 12-bit, which is where Dolby Visual lives, that image is uh, almost perfect. You have no granularity, no shadows, no artifacts. And that helps us um, you know, gain a lot of colors. With 8 bits, you could get roughly about 17 million colors. 10 bits allow, gives you roughly about 1.1 billion colors. And 12 bits is going to give you roughly about 69 billion different colors. And it's very important. Again, going back to the, uh, the color gamut chart, human eye can see all these colors. And especially when it comes to static image. So we have to keep that in mind when we're designing that system. And then um, in this chart, this is going to represent our bandwidth. I have highlighted here the gigs required or the bandwidth required even for um, to send 1020p image at 30 frames and 420 color space we're above and beyond one gig requirements. So this will require 1.11 one, one, one gig, right? So even at this point with one gig solution, we're gonna be compressing all that information. Whereas 10 gig, 10 gig only starts to compress that information from 4K30, 444 chroma at eight bit. So we still have some bandwidth here to spare. So it's very important to understand one gig versus 10 gig. And this is gonna be your HDR requirements. So anything above here, we're gonna start adding compression. Our compression, again, is display stream conversion. So it's the broadcast standard. You actually don't notice any of the, uh, any of the compression and artifacts, but this chart will help you understand where compression kicks in and what bandwidths uh, what bandwidth requirement you have. So the, one of the questions uh, originally was HDMI cable uh, gives us 18 gig bandwidth. Um, so what happens to, the, to this compression? Again, with the HDMI cable, you're able to send up to 18 gig, but we have to understand where 18 gig lives, right? So we could, we could compress, uh, we could send uncompressed 4K60, 444 chroma but nothing above or beyond. And obviously everything else below it. With that in mind, here's a chart that's going to help you see the compression algorithms available. Uh, to the right, we have the standard compression, which is invisible compression technology or color space conversion technology. And on the left is where Zigan figured out how to implement the display stream conversion where it does not eliminate any of your color information. So this is gonna be the, the closest thing mathematically available to us. And again, you can see the, the artifacts on the right, whereas the left is going to be as close to the original as possible. So it's more visible on your blues, magentas, uh, the reds, you can see a lot of that information is missing. So when companies are talking about the whites and blacks, you can even see it's apparent on the whites as well. The whites are not true white. So you have some artifacts in whites as well. And um, you know, some people say, well, it's not that important when you're doing in a boardroom or commercial application. Well, it is because if you're sending uh, any sort of or if you're doing any sort of presentation, if you're sending uh, spreadsheets and whatnot, 
this artifact is the same thing on that Excel sheet. You're going to eliminate a lot of the characters and the letters. It's not going to be visible to humans. You're going to have artifacts and shadows. So that's why compression does matter. So we have to understand what compression algorithms should be used or when they should be used. In a bar and residence, uh, uh, bars and restaurants, I don't think this is as important, but anything above and beyond, so we talked about the military applications, you know, boardrooms and such, higher education, you definitely want to consider the compression algorithm that you're utilizing and the type of AV over IP you're utilizing. So if you can see the difference, then your end user is going to be able to see the difference. And Absolutely. if you have an end user that has the eye, they're an audiophile, they like the Dolby Vision. And I mean, I've, there are groups on Facebook completely dedicated to end users loving Dolby Vision. I ended up in one and they nitpick. Those are the types of guys that are going to want to make sure that they've got their full their full 4K 6444. And those are the guys that are investing in infrastructures, right? Absolutely. They and they're researching. They're integrators. researching before they are going out and buying anything. Correct. And as an integrator, your, our job is to educate our customers. I mean, believe me, when I was an integrator, my customers were educated. When they came to me, I knew they were educated on this topic. And I had to, you know, do my due diligence and go out and learn so I could tell them things that they did not know. And I had to educate them. And that's what converted into sales. So uh, as an integrator, you have to educate your end user as to why they should invest in uh, 10 gig or a compression algorithm that utilizes display stream conversion and not a color space conversion. Okay. So now we get to my favorite part because we have talked all about all the different things that are, you know, can go wrong in the compression and the this and the that. So now we're going to talk about our 10 gig AV over IP solution called IP logic. This is actually the reason I came to work for Ziggin. I went in, I interviewed after I've convinced Ed that I'm definitely the one they need to have. He showed me IP logic and what it was capable of. And as somebody who's been in the industry a while, I was able to recognize the uniqueness of this. So I'm really excited. This is the most versatile AV over IP system um, to ever hit the market and to be actually as strong as it is. Don't be switching through my slides yet, Ed. I'm, I'm Fat fingers. Ready. Fat fingers. Yeah. I apologize. Slow your roll, man. So this is a patent pending platform. It's the one of a kind that also actually has an audio matrix built into the platform. So not only are you going to be, you know, utilizing this fantastic system, but we're also making sure that you're going to have to buy less bulky boxes. So our patent pending platform is the only one of its kind to have audio, which is the AES 67 and video um, from SDVOE uh, to be distributed on the same switch instead of requiring segregation of your audio and video on separate switches. So no AVB, none of that good, none of that stuff. Everything is all in one. So eliminating the need for the additional switches, the bridges and other proprietary products, this is going to increase your customer value proposition. And this is one of the reasons why we're going to stand above the competition. Right. And as a standard package, it will include your picture in picture, picture by picture, multi-view, uh, video wall up to uh, 64 displays. We have about roughly about 30 different templates that you could choose from for your multi-view. You could have up to 32 sources projected on a single display. And this is Ed jumping ahead and biting off of my next slide. Whoa, whoa, so why don't we go whoa, whoa. ahead I'm and move to that next myself, slide? I would informally <laughs> not do. This shit is awesome. Are you well, thank you, Jay. Me? I'm gonna mute now. All quiet. right, thank you. I appreciate the enthusiasm. You rock. All right, yep. next. Next slide there. So we'll go ahead and talk a little bit about some of the really cool things that the IP logic does. So of course, first off, we've got that audio matrix built in. You have all of the broadcast standards, which is the EES uh, 67, 128, ST2, 110. This is really cool. Independent scalers. It, nothing is done to the lowest common denominator. Everything is going to Every display is going to project at the highest possible resolution that display can handle. That's a huge deal. This is how smart Ed and the Ziggin team are. He's not going to brag about it. I am. That's pretty, pretty phenomenal. 
Well, it was very important for us not to dumb the dumb it down to the lowest common denominator. So we wanted to make sure all the sources output in their maximum capability, which is gonna be your 4K 64 for 4 Chroma and or HDR or Dolby Vision. So we could accept all that and then we'll send whatever the display is requesting. So if you have 20, 30 displays and it's a mixed display environment from anywhere, anywhere from 480p up to 4K 64 for 4, each of the displays will get their own unique um, resolution. Uh, again, if it's, uh, we could do color space conversion, frame rate conversion, and each of the displays could get their own unique. Um, so we also have the autonomous edit management. That means these boxes monitor the edit tables from the displays and the sources. So you don't have to know anything. All you have to do is really plug these encoders and decoders to your sources and displays and the autonomous edit management will do the rest. Will automatically de detect the edit resolution, you know, whatever it can support, whether it's two channel, five channel, uh, if it's 1080p uh, or 1080i, 480p, 4K 60, 4K 30, Dolby Vision, HDR 10, we could detect all that and send the correct information to that particular display. Um, again, it's complete uh, customizable, virtually zero latency. We have zero latency up to 4K3444, and then the, uh, it's a one to four compression from 4K30 to 4K60. So big difference when it comes to compression. One does 64 to one, and the other one does one to four com uh, compression. So, it also has instant switching, which uh, next week we are going to have the live demo. So next Tuesday, 9 um, Pacific, 12 Eastern, we're actually going to do a live demonstration, a quarantine COVID edition of a demo for you guys. And you're going to be able to see the switching. Uh, every time we've taken that out in the field and we've done live demos, that's always something that really shocks people, how quickly we can switch between one source to another. Um, and it's all seamless. Uh, CAT6, will CAT6 suffice or do we need CAT6A, CAT7, or fiber infrastructure? Um, good question. CAT6A is recommended. CAT6A is the only ca cable that's going to give you 10.2 gig throughput. However, this unit also works off of CAT5E. Uh, you have some obvious limitations when it comes to CAT5E, but that has to do with the cable because with the CAT5E, if you know the specification, it could only deliver X amount of bandwidth at a short distance. So CAT5E will limit you to roughly about 40 meters, which is about 130 feet. So it will work off of CAT5E, but uh, we do recommend CAT6A, especially if you're going to utilize the PoE aspect of things. These boxes are PoE enabled, so if you do want your PoE enabled, you do want the category cable. However, these boxes also have fiber built into it. So it's either or, that's whatever you plug in, or you can use both for redundancy. Uh, when you utilize fiber, you could go up to 30 kilometers, uh, again, nothing additional that you have to purchase. It's all part of it. Uh, one box has everything built into it. And we also have a one gig throughput. So if you want to take that one gig, feed it into your TV for control and or to surf the uh, internet for your uh, smart TV uh, apps, uh, we have that one gig throughput as well. So one cable literally takes care of everything. That's why it's important for us to go with a 10 gig platform because we could give you one gig throughput for other peripherals um, and or control. But when you're utilizing one gig ecosystem, you're obviously dumbing it down. At best, you're gonna get 10, 100. Again, at best, if you're sending about 720p. Uh, so, so anything above and beyond, it's going to uh, utilize your entire um, bandwidth, so you're not even going to be able to send Ethernet through your one gig. So before we go to the next um, section of slides, uh, one of my bullet points got cut off here, but um, basically the last thing about this that is really important for you guys to know is that this is completely expandable and scalable. Uh, the sky is the limit. That's, that's what we say about IP logic. The possibilities are endless. You can build and build and build and build and build upon this platform. Whatever you can dream, you can actually make happen with this. And that's why it's one network, it's one ecosystem. And I think after you can, we continue to go through this, there's not gonna be any other 
option for you. So what Ed has done um, and the team, the engineering team at Ziggin, because just so everybody knows, uh, Ziggin is a manufacturer, but we're an engineering team first. It's like 30 engineers and, and Vanessa. So I'm gonna, you know, it, <laughs> you're gonna, <laughs> the engineers do a really great job. And um, what we're looking at next um, are some IP logic um, diagrams that right. uh, the team has done. I'm gonna let Ed talk about all that good stuff. So you can These see are what just we can basic do. Oh, wait, diagrams. real quick, real quick. Yes. Is there a unit that can go outside in an enclosure for a remote located IO via fiber? So you could actually put these encoders and decoders anywhere. Uh, it's got a radiator design. We don't have any cooling fans or whatnot. So if you could put it in an enclosure, that's fine. Uh, these guys are designed, they're, uh, you know, it's literally military grade. And we are utilizing in, uh, this in military applications for command and control um, environments. So, um, you know, it's got a heavy duty aluminum, uh, milled out of single block of aluminum kind of chassis design. So it's built to last. Um, I mean, you could, you could literally put this anywhere, really. He said, thank you. <laughs> Anytime. All right. So this uh, first reference design just uh, basically shows you what's available to that single display. Um, obviously, if uh, from your encoders, you can pull any sort of content, uh, show it as picture in picture, picture by picture, multi-view. And again, when it comes to multi-view, we have roughly about 25 or 30 different templates you could choose from, and you could project up to 32 uh, quadrants on a single display. So. If you have 32 sources, you could view all, every single one of them on a single display. And again, no additional equipment necessary. Um, again, we have several reference designs, uh, one to one, one to many. And this one is a four in, four out kind of design just to help you understand what it's doing. If you want to do a video wall, you could take a single source and build your video wall as big as you need. In this case, in this application, we're doing a two by two. So you would have one transmitter and four receivers. And, and again, that will give you two by two. We can go up to how many for a video 64, wall? 64, 64, eight by eight. So it's customizable. You could choose a, um, vertical, horizontal displays on a fly. We also have the stretch option, which nobody else has. Um, and I think um, we have some screen grabs from our Zignet. Yeah, we can show you guys all the templates and all that right. good stuff. We do have one quick question, um, and I don't know the answer to this. Uh, does Zikin have GSA approval? Uh, we are actually working on that. We started the registration last week, so we're working on that. But these units are made in Taiwan, so you could actually use it on any government application. That's why it was very important for us not to manufacture in China or anywhere else. But um, as of right now, we're working on the GSA uh, approval. But should you need Made in USA, we actually have the ability to build these in-house. And in fact, for the longest time, we were building these in um, in inside our facility, Made any, in USA. Any IP65 ratings? No, no, because we do uh, need ventilation for the heat. It's although it's got a radiator design. Um, no, it's not approved for IP65 because it's not a sealed box. We do have some air hole uh, ventilation holes. However, you could you, you could use a IP65 approved uh, can to put this in and um, utilize it that way. Um, Jay says, with any interest, would you create one? Um, so one of the unique things about Ziggin um, is that everything is designed and engineered right here. Uh, I say right here, I'm in North Carolina, but everything is designed right there in, uh, in, in Southern LA. So if there's enough interest, I, you know, Ed? We definitely do one-offs. I mean, we've done things for the aviation. Um, you know, if there is interest and it covers the expense, we'll definitely build. There it is, there it is. Yeah. Jay, you get enough people wanting that and, and I will make you a ton, you just let yeah. me know. Write Absolutely. the PO tomorrow, I'm ready to go. We do a lot of custom designs, one-off designs. I mean, again, you know, there's a lot of engineering involved. If it pays for the engineering time, then we'll definitely do it. We gotta feed the engineers, they get cranky if you don't. These things just there you happen. Go. Yeah. 
Um, All right. And this, uh, this diagram here just represents multiple switches. We're cascading, jumping from one to another. And you are not degrading the picture quality. This is digital domain, so you're not going to degrade the picture quality. These uh, ports, throughput ports, are 100 gig ports, so you could uh, cascade infinite number of switches. There is literally no limit. I think the math we did, uh, it started roughly choking up at 1 million, but by 1 million. And then 1 million and 1, we'll, we're going to have to dumb it down to um, 4K, uh, 4K 3444. Uh, oh, so, what if, a bummer. Yeah, what a bummer, right? Right. But if you ever get that job, take the deposit, leave the industry. <laughs> <laughs> right? That's my recommendation. Um, just so everybody's aware, all of these wonderful uh, reference designs are available on our website, ziggincorp.com. Um, they're all under the IP logic. You can actually just view them or you can download them and have them on your desktop when you're doing all of these wonderful installs that are going to make me look like a rock star to my boss. Yeah. And we have more that uh, we're getting ready to upload that is going to show you the audio portion of it and you'll understand why in a minute. Uh, again, another reference design, um, hopping through the switches, having multiple encoders, decoders. And if you're doing a campus design, right, if you're, if you're uh, in a large campus, you can actually put these switches in a local building and just run one fiber connection to the next building over and do the same thing, hop over to another switch, so on and so forth. Not everything has to be home run to the switch, so you could have multiple switch design. All right, again, another quick reference design, one to four application. Um, this is point to point. Um, this actually is showing you the IP essentials. You do need IP essential box. This is the computer that talks to our encoders and decoders. And when you look at this IP essentials, we actually um, segregate the network. So we separate your video over IP from the house network. So it's essentially a firewall, if you will, so that no one could hack in to your video distribution or whatnot. Again, when you're doing security, government, military, it's very important to segregate and prevent the cross contamination from one network to another. Are you telling me the government doesn't want people peeking into their network? That's crazy, Ed. Yeah. It's insane. Uh, and it also, this uh, one gig port ties into your one gig switch where you would tie in your, all your controls and whether it's RTI, Crestron, Control 4, Control Platforms, and that's how you would control this video distribution. Um, we do um, have approved switches or recommended switches. So we'll work off of any, um, this is a question, sorry, um, Ed. Sure. This is from Greg. So we do have, uh, we'll work off of any 10 gig switch. Uh, I think Cisco um, has one. Um, we work with Netgear. Netgear is a part of the SDVOE Alliance, um, and we can help resource that or source that for you. But Ed, it'll work under... So anything that's 10 gig with layer two IGMP snooping, uh, layer is. two and above will work with it. Um, however, my personal choice when it comes to AV over IP would be Netgear. It's literally plug and play, no configuration needed. You pull it out of the box, you throw it on a rack, start plugging things in, no configuration needed. You know, for the AV guys, I'm not a huge network guy. You know, I could find my way or work my way through it, but I'm not a huge network guy. So for me and guys like me, it's important for me not to waste time in managing the switches. I want it to be as plug in and play as possible. So my personal recommendation is the, the Netgear M4300, anything above uh, in that family, M4300 and above. They do make it in uh, hybrid, copper and fiber. They make in PoE and they have a 96 port switch. It's modular. You could uh, configure that any way you want, fiber, copper, PoE, no PoE. So it, very flexible when it comes to AV over IP. Uh, this reference diagram also shows that our encoders and decoders could be utilized as an extender. If you want a elaborate extender that actually does scaling frame rate conversion, utilizes fiber, 
Um, all the bells and whistles, audio embedding, the embedding, you could actually use that point to point without any switch. It's plug and play. It will just act as a normal extender. So that's also another benefit when it comes to um, our units. Uh, again, quick reference diagram, one to one, when you're trying to use scaling and anything else in between. Uh, and this is an intro to our essentials box. Vanessa? All right. Oh, I get to talk now? Oh, it's so yeah, exciting. Absolutely. Yay. So uh, this is actually the brain of IP Logic. This is the um, powerhouse that provides full management and diagnostics for all of the IP Logic devices on the network. You're only going to need one of these. So um, it's got a, a web based graphical user interface. So it's got the GUI. It isolates your video distribution network from your home network. It works again with the entire IP Logic platform and it does provide SFP for long hauls. Right, again, same, same approach to our encoders and decoders. Uh, this box also has the SFP module um, and uh, copper ports. Should you wanna use this or install this remotely and run it back to one of the buildings, you can. You can utilize the copper and or the SFP port and go up to 30 kilometers from point A to point B. And then this is going to be our encoder. Our encoder has the audio portion built into it. So this audio jack here that we have uh, could output audio from any encoder and or decoder. So you could actually specify the source content that you want to output on this port. Uh, we allow for bidirectional IR. This is our one gig throughput. This is our USB connector. We support RS-232, full duplex, bidirectional, our 10 gig PoE port, and our SFP module. So either one, whatever you plug in, it's gonna take priority. Or you can use both as redundant. So if one fails, the other one kicks in, should one fail. But these guys are designed to last. And uh, we actually have our super fancy HDMI with locking connector. So you're not gonna find this connector just on any box. Uh, 24 karat gold plated. Um, again, we wanted to add the best of the best. Locking power connector. Um, should you use a cheap old HDMI cable, we have internal lock that uh, forces the cable in place. So you're gonna use about 20 pounds of uh, pulling force to pull that HDMI cable out. Again, we go above and beyond uh, to prevent mishaps. It's got the picture-in-picture -picture built in, a tiling, multi-view, video ball, scaler, on-screen display, thumbnail preview. When it comes to thumbnail preview, you could, you could actually preview on the app. You could preview the sources that are coming in and all the source content going out to your decoders. So you could actually see what's at the TV end. If the TV is not outputting, should you run into a problem, you could verify that the output is receiving the video. Each of these boxes have audio matrix built into it. They have two flavors of audio matrix. We have the AS67 and ST2110, which plays with uh, Ravina, Livewire, Dante, uh, and AVB, all of that. Um, but each one of these outputs come with a five band EQ presets, uh, volume attenuation, tone control, left, right balance, and surround sound effect enhancement. So you could actually go into the Zignet and configure all that. And I'll show you that in a minute here when we jump into our slides or the, the graphs from other screens. This is going to be our decoder. Our decoder again has audio inputs on it. So we could actually capture audio codec and send it back to any given uh, encoder and or zone output. And we could actually stream the audio that's being inputted here onto the network. So any AES or Dante device could pick, up, could pick that up from the network. You have um, balanced, unbalanced input, and you could actually configure that in the settings, whether it's balanced or unbalanced. We also have Toslink input. So you could come out of your smart TV feed that toss link and pick that up, pick up that audio anywhere in the network. Uh, we have the USB 2.0 switch built into it. So it's a two port hub. You could have a KVM keyboard mouse and or uh, thumbnail drive and pick that up anywhere. 
Uh, RS-232, again, full duplex, one gig throughput, 10 gig PoE, SFP module, again, the fancy HDMI connector and a locking power supply. You will not need a power supply if you're utilizing PoE, obviously, but I just wanted to throw that out, out there. Again, hey, same bells and whistles, video wall up and down scaling, um, can scale it down to 480p and all the way up to 4K60, 444, with or without HDR and or Dolby Vision. Just real quick, I wanted to let everybody know what the MSRPs are on these products. So for the Zig Essential, your MSRP is 870. For the um, Pro uh, Encoder, you're looking at uh, 2,500. And then for the Decoder, you're looking at 2,350. So these are the MSRP prices. If you are interested in dealer cost, uh, we'll give you the information. You can shoot me an email and I will make sure you get that at the end of the hour, which we are getting close to. Okay, so I'll jump on to our next slide, which is gonna be our cage. This cage can store up to 10 encoders and decoders. It's got a lot of smarts built into it. So obviously you can see we have RS-232, Ethernet, and PowerJack. And that's, uh, we. I believe we also have IR. Yes, we do have IR port on there. And that's designed to monitor uh, the temperature from each of these encoders and decoders. You could control the fan speed. Should you install this in a theater environment, and let's say the movie kicks in, you could actually send the trigger to the fans to go in a silent mode. Um, again, the fans don't even kick in unless they need to, to, cool, to, to keep things cool. But should you want to turn off the fans for the viewing purposes, you could send a command and shut off the fans completely. Uh, they do have a radiator design so they could work without a fan for a long period of time. Uh, the MSRP on this is $1,000. Um, just so everybody's aware of that. So real quick, um, are the IP Logic products, this is coming from Bob, are they HDMI 2.1 ready or are we gonna have to replace when 2.1 comes out? Um, so that's a good question. So they're backwards compatible with HDCP. So I, I, I don't wanna confuse you guys. So we're backwards compatible with HDCP 2.3. So it does play with all the 2.1 products. So if you have a 2.1 product, you could throw that on a network, it's already enabled. So we could send the 2.3 uh, HDCP 2.3 flag out there. So all the contents uh, could actually output the 2.1 information through this platform. However, again, when you're talking about 2.0 and 2.1, you have some hardware limitation. Although the software can do a lot of things for you, but you, you are again limited to the hardware. So this current one is limited to 2.0. However, you could send content, but it has to limit it to 4K 6444. In other words, you're not gonna be able to put 8K throughput. So it will always uh, request 4K 6444. However, once the silicones become available, we will have the 8K uh, available and they will be able to play. It's gonna be backwards compatible. So you could mix and match, whether it's a 2.0, 2.1, uh, you can mix and match, okay? All right, so um, next up, because um, we've only got about 10 minutes left, I really wanna run through the Zignet diagnostic okay. software. So I'm gonna give you guys a quick sneak peek of what's coming oh, here. Oh, sorry, I forgot about that. Yeah, this Not is bad. our audio matrix. Um, you actually now can um, import more audio sources and go out to more audio zones. So you have four inputs. This is a four by eight footprint. It's one you design half rack space. So you could actually put a couple of them side by side uh, to be 16 by eight. Um, so it's four inputs, eight zone output. Again, balanced on balance, you could configure this for microphone input and output. Uh, and if you utilize this, then you won't need Zig, uh, Zigin's Essential Box because essentially the Essentials Box is built into this audio matrix. Uh, cascadable, you could have as many units as you want. So every time you're adding a unit into your network, you're adding four by eight. 
uh, another four by eight. And every one of them could be addressable. They all come with uh, balanced on balanced input, five band EQ, volume attenuation, tone control. We also stream the same audio. So if you come analog input, that audio content is available on a network. So one device, if it's uh, AES67 or ST2110 enabled, they could pick up that content anywhere. Uh, and when I say AES67, that means Dante, SAP, Verbena, Livewire, NMOS, Dashboard, Ethernet, AVB. So we play with everybody. We're not only limited to Dante. We play with everybody. It's literally plug and play. So. Um so I've got a question here. Yes. I just lost it. PoE port minimum wattage required. 30 watts. 30 watts. So yeah, that's why we uh, label it as PoE, not PoE++. plus uh, plus. So a lot of the companies, when, when it comes to one gig, they say PoE, but in the fine, uh, in the fine print, you'll see PoE++. plus plus. PoE++ plus plus injectors add about $500. So by the time you take all that into consideration, this is much more affordable with all the bells and whistles that we threw at it, so. And I, I might have missed it, but you did already say if you have this audio matrix, the essential is built into this. That is correct. The essentials okay. is built into this, so you will not need an essential box. And we are basically giving you the ability to uh, add infinite number of audio source and zones. And so if, if you're doing, uh, I'll give you a typical uh, scenario when you're doing a residential application, you might have 10 TVs, but you're going to have about 20 or 30 different zones. So if you do have that application, then you could throw in uh, one of our Flex AX48. And we call it Flex because you can add as many as you want. And you're just basically adding more source and more zones. Uh, do you have a estimated list price on this yet? I believe the MSRP, I'm going to go a little high right now because I don't have that in front of me. Uh, we just got everything ironed out yesterday, in fact, uh, but uh, I want to say it's roughly about 1300 MSRP. And again, I'm going high on it. So MSRP 1300. Um, so real quick, the best thing about IP logic, uh, I think that is going to, that to me, that's the most impressive because it has all these bells and whistles and it's all so phenomenal, but really what's going to make this work and what's going to make the biggest difference for you is the Zignet software that comes with this product. The Zignet software is basically the Zignet uh, diagnostics tool that we have built into all of our matrices and switches only we've really, we've, huh, the engineering team has really taken it to a whole different level. Uh, you can be an entry level integrator, you know, just right out of your, you know, training classes, and you're going to be able to utilize this software and implement the IP logic and install that. And you can be what, you know, the best programmer on the planet, and you're still going to really enjoy everything that the IP logic uh, Zignet software can do for you. Again, it's got the EDID management, you have your video controls, audio, diagnostics, alerts, your analyzers, but everything has been taken to an even more extreme level. You have um, templates, you've got controls, you've got customization. Um, what we basically did, um, we, I say we, what the engineers basically did is they took their brain and they took the uh, engineering, the integrator part of Ed's brain, and they tried to basically shove it in this box for you to make it as easy as possible. And again, this comes free with your um, IP logic. Uh, well, and product. everything we built, any sort of switch or uh, anything we built, the Zigna Diagnostics is part of it. But uh, instead of this talking is, about, let's, yeah. uh, let's show some screen grabs from the Zigna Diagnostics. This is actually the IP logic control, one of the control pages. Uh, screen grab from the audio control, but here you could log in and these things are drag and drop. So whatever source you, you want, you could drag and drop um, and it's instant. But here I, we wanted to highlight the, the preamp that's built into every encoder and decoder. You have the graphical EQ, you have frequency cutoff. This is where you would come to select balanced on balance. Uh, this also has audio delay, which we forgot to mention. You have up to 680 millisecond delay per zone. So if you need to delay the audio uh, for the video to match the video, you have that option too, and you could delay that up to 680 milliseconds per output. There's and actually a lot that we have forgotten to cover. 
Uh, next week when we do the live demo, you are going to hear a lot of things. You're going to see a lot more things specifically uh, that will make a lot of lots, a lot more sense and that are going to show you a lot more of the smaller bells and whistles. But again, just to give you a quick uh, intro on the audio side of things, you have volume control, again, the volume attenuation per output, five band graphical EQ, or you have presets where you could choose from, tone control, left, right balance, um, and then this wide band, uh, band control. You have cutoff frequencies. Uh, it's a drop down, and you have a lot of selections, uh, high pass filters, everything built into it. This is our gonna. This is gonna be our video routing page again. Drag and drop. You could drag. Uh, you could select any source. Just click on it. Drop it onto the destination. As soon and as it's let go, immediate. It's Sorry. I said it's immediate. You guys will it's see immediate. that next week. Correct. It's really. It's immediate. really something else. As soon as you send it, it's the image is there. You could hardly see the switching speed on, on that. That's how fast it is. And this is just basically audio page again. Uh, uh, just a screen grab without the presets. Uh, you would come to the settings, click on this. For any of the destinations, you could click the destination and then click on the settings. It'll just take you to the graphical EQ interface or the audio control page. The next page here, again, is this is just a basic uh, screen grab of the edit specifications area. Uh, again, you come in, you could select your um, and destination, whether it's an encoder and decoder, and you could read the edit metadata. Uh, we have audio diagnostics, video diagnostics, device status. It even uh, reads out temperature from these units. So whatever you need to know, it's going to out uh, output for you. Um, it's as simple as clicking on the tabs. Uh, I believe we have about 10 tabs in total, and we're only showing four here. Uh, the next one is our multi-view. Uh, multi-view, again, you select a destination. In this case, uh, I did a quick screen grab. I selected our TCL display, and I configured that to be a 4x4 plus middle by selecting this template here, and then I started dragging my sources onto the display. Another cool thing, so if you're sending out all these sources to a single display, we also have these speakers or and mute buttons. Uh, if you click on the speaker icon, you can hear the sound of it, uh, so on and so forth. Whatever, whichever one you want to listen to, you can just click on that, and you'll get the sound of that on your TV. Another thing, your TVs have a separate audio matrix built into it. Case in point, if you have a sound bar going into this, not, a, um, not ceiling speakers or house speakers, but a sound bar, you could actually send a different audio codec through the HDMI to the sound bar, whereas no one else can do that. Again, on the HDMI, you also have a separate audio matrix. Uh, I could be watching CNN and listening to my Pandora station if I wanted to. Again, it's super flexible. Um, we wanted to give you everything you'll need as an integrator. We want to put all the tips and tricks on your fingertips at your fingertips so you could accomplish those jobs whenever you're making those promises. You know, your customers get excited. You have the ability to do so. This is super flexible. If you could thank it, you could build it or you could do it with this uh, platform. And again, this is just a quick screen grab from our video wall. Uh, in this case, we're showing 64 different displays. Again, the drop down tabs, you could do the width and height, vertical, horizontal displays, how many you want on there. Uh, aspect ratio, this is one thing you're not going to get with any other platform. We could actually select the aspect ratio to keep nat native or uh, stretch. We could even put this video wall in gen lock mode so it actually is showing the same exact frame. Whatever is coming out of your display, all the frames get locked so you're not missing any of that information. Say you're doing an airport or operating room or military application where they're doing a missile control or um, you know, launch or whatnot, you want to make sure every frame is being delivered at the same exact time. So Real quick question. I think this goes back to the audio. Uh, George asks, does it have built-in test tones to, tr to troubleshoot audio paths? Um, no, but that, that's a good one. I think we could add it fairly quickly. Uh, so George, um, yeah, I'm going to say we're going to go ahead and 
we'll have those <laughs> we'll have those test tones for you. But I do want to point out, which I skipped over, it. you could actually do grouping. Uh, so if you um, have multiple audio zones, you could assign groups. All you do is just drag these rooms into a group. You set up, you could sell it, uh, set up as many groups as you want. So if you want to put it in a party mode, you have the ability to do that as well. And you also have audio ramping for the entire group. But the tone, could, uh, the tone to test it, that's a good, uh, um, that's, that's good. I, you know, haven't thought about that. But well, thanks, I think George. You could definitely add that on there. All right. All right. So that's going to wrap it up. So this is the, my, the best uh, webinar we've got yet is going to be next week because that's when we're going to show IP logic AV over IP ecosystem. We're going to show it live. Of course, we can't be with you in person because of the pandemic and all that good stuff, but this is going to be the next best thing. So you're going to be able to see IP logic. You're going to be able to see the Zignet um, web GUI. You'll be able to actually look at it, watch Ed manipulate it while looking at IP logic and you can really see what it does. Um, you're going to be able to watch it in real time. We'll show you all the ticks, tips and tricks and all the different fun things it can do. Um, and I really hope you join us. Uh, does anybody have any real quick questions before we hang up or is everybody good? All right, everybody's good because it's getting late. Um, we have advanced classes coming in June. We're going to go over eARC, fixed rate links, variable refresh rates, all that good stuff. We are going to be uh, eventually, yes, you can invite integrators. You invite whomever you want, Mr. Dorsey. Bring everybody. Um, the, uh, we will be doing classes on um, IP Logic itself uh, over the summer. So we'll be talking about installation, uh, how to properly utilize the software, all kinds of good stuff. So be, stay tuned for that. Um, thank you guys for coming. Ed, you want to flip one more screen for me there? Yeah, but before I do that, that just got me thinking about the, the tone uh, that gentleman that uh, just said. That, <laughs> George, uh, yeah, my, way my to go, partner. George. So, uh, George, we do have identifiers on our encoders and decoders, so you could actually identify the units that you're working on. So that just gave me a great idea. I mean, I could tie the same, uh, same lead or uh, one of the IOs onto the audio and just send some pulses, uh, just basic sinoids. Um, but yeah, it, it can easily be done and uh, we'll do it. We'll get it done. Yeah, see another benefit of working for a small integrator or a, a smaller manufacturer, we can do things on the fly. So if you wanna get in touch with us, we are easy to get in touch with. Um, you can give us a call, 818-654-5252. You can shoot us an email at info at zigincorp.com. I say bug Ed directly. It's more fun. Ed at zigincorp.com. You can bug me, Vanessa. I welcome Ed, everybody. He welcomes everybody. We're you are welcome. To work with, easy to do business with, easy to communicate with. We want to work with you guys. So if you have questions, feel free. Reach out to me directly. The phone number listed here gets uh gets to me right away and um you know i could be reached at ed at zigincorp.com i just or said reach that out vanessa at vanessa at zigincorp.com i said that too hey. good gracious all right guys thank you so much for joining us see you next week please let everybody know um and we will talk with everybody soon Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Appreciate you. spending your time uh, or morning with us. Um, and hopefully uh, you, there was a takeaway for you. Oh, and this will be on our website for you to review. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Have a great day.